Hello and welcome back to the second game of today. It is Star Letter Season 7, Day Number 2. We have Menace and NextKZ, and we're gonna see which one of these two teams will take the point that is up for grabs, because Menace so far won one and lost one, while NextKZ has lost one game. And we're gonna see if they can get themselves a point to their name, or if they're gonna be joining KP, who so far has not won a single game yet either. Wow, did I just burn them or not? Anyways, I'm gonna have uh, a co-caster for the rest of the night uh, that is different than the previous ones that I've had so far. Please welcome uh, Papa Drage, or Dre, that I'm gonna call him, to the stand, no, to, uh, to the broadcast. Welcome. Thank you. So, your first Dota 2 cast? Yeah. Awesome. Actually. So, do you, do you have a bit of knowledge about these teams? I played versus a couple of these... Uh, most of these people actually, but I don't know the team so well and I don't know how the picks will look now when with the new version and yeah. with everything. I think that's how a lot of people feel right now though. There yeah. are so many new different teams. I mean Menace of course is formerly known as Red in the Dark. I think a lot of people still know them and Next KZ also a very stable team. But with all the changes, with the new heroes in the pool, nobody really knows what they're gonna be up against. And that makes of course all the games extra interesting because you don't know how it's gonna end. You don't know who's gonna end up winning and that's making Dota good, but it's yeah. uh, it's a bit of a new for everybody, I'd say. Yeah, it's hard to say what what Heroes is key now. I mean, I don't know if Troll is even good, but, but he's, he's, he's in there now, so I don't know. Uh, the bands look quite similar for the from the last version, but... Yeah, I mean, we have IO, Batrider, um, NOD and Nature's Prophet banned out with yeah. the Visage first pickup. Of the new Heroes that we've seen in, we've seen Abaddon, the most of it. Uh, he has actually been having pretty big impact in all the games, especially previous game, where uh, he was able to buy... Uh, oh, actually, I'm not going to spoil. Um, so <laughs> if you should watch that if you watch in the VOD. But, yeah, Abaddon, uh, Abaddon, sorry, I pronounced it properly. Abaddon is, uh, is, is a highly favored hero, or seems to be a highly favored hero. Maybe just because people are new with playing against him. We've seen Centaur yesterday twice, where <laughs> he was able to win one game. He got two hearts and the salt grass, and he didn't die. He just was uh, quite tanky. And we've seen for the first time today, two games ago, we've seen Elder Titan for the first time yeah. ever I've seen him actually. But that's, I haven't, I had, I actually have seen Troll Warlord once, but that was a while ago. I think Abaddon is the most interesting of those because he can just mess up so much initiate with his shield. But if a team can pick up Troll in a perfect setup, he is going to be really hard to play versus two, so. Yep, we're gonna have so far the Darkseer and the Naga Siren. That's already a strong team fight combination from Nix next KZ. Darkseer, of course, with a vacuum, with a song set up for anything. Uh, they are still needing to have something to set up for, though. Ten seconds and um, by the way, for people wondering also that are watching the VOD, there are slight drops going on, and that's uh, unfortunately. Oh, you can't. You actually, you still have to toggle on your microphone inside the game. Can you just toggle on and off? Your right. microphone inside the game client. Let's see if I can do that. Ten seconds remaining. You still have a bit of static in your microphone still as well, apparently. Five seconds remaining. Okay, off and on is what you mean, right? Yeah. yeah. And do you see, like, if you talk, do you see the bar moving? Uh, and where, where's the threshold when you talk? I don't see any bar moving when I talk, no. That's not good. You have to have the right microphone set in in your audio settings, the microphone that you're talking into. Ten seconds remaining. And while you uh, like the with the audio settings, you can also see somewhere where you can have the microphone settings that it's the right microphone so that your microphone bar is actually moving, and uh, that has to be moving for you to be actually audible inside the game client. Yeah, I'm in the game now. I saw it moving. Good. Maybe it's better now then. Well, we'll see. We can actually uh, ask, of course, viewers, if you're watching inside the game, let us know if you can now hear him. So that you can uh, hear both of us, rather than just me talking to myself, which would be quite <laughs> awkward, actually. I'm sorry for that. Um, yeah, let's hope it's better now. Yep. Uh, we have got the, some ban outs. We have still got, of course, some support needed for XKZ. So it's Jakiro and Chen that are being removed from the pool by Menace. Jakiro, a good one to remove because it works out very well together with the Darkseer and Naga Siren, of course, with the song and the vacuum into the wall, etc. Blah blah. And it is NextKZ that removes the Lone Druid and the Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin works well together with the Visage. And Lone Druid is, of course, one of the other cores that works well together with the Lifestealer. 
as uh, talking about course next case he doesn't have any just yet I think I'm gonna go for get gyro here I think he's really good too with my guy yeah uh, I'm just saying the chat should be fixed in two minutes so if you're not able to hear him inside the game try toggling to a different stream and then back so that you can actually try that out it should be working out sometimes that's uh, also one of the things that you can do to change it. We have a Rubik picked up. So that's going to be the second or first support for XKZ. Are you expecting Naga Seren to be a support or a carry in this or in this case? Yeah, I'm expecting him to be a support. I'm expecting your Yairo to be picked up. Let's see if I'm right. Ten seconds yeah. remaining. Menace first though. They still need a secondary support for their Visage. We already have a life seater there so far. No disabled just yet. I was kind of maybe expecting a Rubik for them to set up for the open wounds for the life stealer, but so far, um, of course, Rubik picked up by next KZ. They have to uh, look to someone else to try and do that. They already have a pretty strong setup if they want to try and go aggressive, though. Yeah, definitely. Both teams do actually. This is just nice to go aggressive with, but Siren is also a strong hero to go aggressive with, with in my opinion. For sure, set up with the ensnare. Rubik Especially against knights. Yeah, a lifestealer, I mean. You can get him even though he is ragey. Yeah, and there's uh, the gyrocopter. Well, it, it feels to me like both teams are denying each other heroes. Uh, we have got the Rubik that I was expecting for Menace picked up by Nexus and the gyrocopter that you were expecting for Nexus <laughs> picked up by Menace. Still, though, dual core by Menace was kind of expected. And this is actually looking to be an aggressive trial lane from either of the carries. I mean, Gyrocopter or Lifestealer could work very well together with Visage and any kind of support, really. Yeah, definitely. I think they picked up Rubik because they don't want to give away uh, his ult since they have Naga Siren. They don't want to give away the sleeve. Okay, by the way, you are now indeed uh, audible inside the game, but you have still got quite a bit of static coming through, apparently. Maybe you're using a different microphone than you, what you want to use on, on the stream, like... Uh, I don't know what kind of microphone you actually use. I have a headset. I have a good headset. Uh, the microphone on it doesn't seem so uh, so strong. It feels like there's, you know, something blocking it. Static. Still. So, so it's still static. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. What can I do to fix it? I don't know. I actually don't know. It's, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna lower my my threshold a little bit. See okay. if that's gonna help. Yeah. Let's hope that helps. Otherwise, I don't know what to do. I don't know either. We can uh, look inside in between uh, games for now. Uh, apologies for the inconvenience, but it is the way that it is. As the Weaver gets picked up by next KZ, and that is also a hero that could work well in a aggressive trial lane. But it's also a hero that I was actually expecting to be also with a duo carry. But right now, I think the only option that they still have is pick up a Dragon Knight, because. They already have Darkseer for the offlane. I'm expecting Naga, Siren, and Rubik to indeed be supports. Mm -hmm. And they need a mid that can then also be a core hero. And Dragonite is definitely one that can be that. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Weaver is a good pick here, by the way, because they don't really have anything to lock him down with. I mean, the Visage Familiars is not really that good. Sure, Puck helps a little bit, but no real stun. No real stun at all. Dream Coil, indeed. The Silence could help out greatly against Ten Weaver, but he normally is fast enough to still press the uh, Shikushi to be able to get away while silenced. Yeah. Abaddon gets banned out, and well, that's one that gets removed. Also, wouldn't be one with a Disable, though. I'm really expecting some solid Disable that now, now that the Weaver's picked up, that they definitely need to have. Yeah, I agree. Maybe Crystal Maiden? Could work out very well. And also with the Visage, of course, able to roam around the map a little bit more. As we're gonna see if Menace bends out that Dragon Knight. Which other hero are you expecting for next KZ? Oh, I don't know what they're thinking here. If they're using... They might need a mid here. So they c could be pretty much anything. Co-op, uh, Queen of Pain or Storm. But Dragon Knight seems cool. No, I think it, maybe it's it's more a storm or a queen of pain here. Let's see. We'll soon get the answer. We will soon get the answer. There's a full minute left for next Gazi to uh, think about it though, because they have got a lot of time left inside that bonus time. Menace still have a little bit left as well, not as much though. So it's in the end, the Shadow Fiend still a hero that can semi carry a little bit in terms of. Uh, Care potential cores for next KZ, but if he gets shut down, which 
with the Visage and another support very strong in early game ganks could definitely happen. I'm kind of worried for next KZ in this case, because Menace is looking pretty strong with the Gyrocopter and the Lifestealer. I think I would favor them a little bit over the course of next KZ at the moment, being a Weaver and a Shadow Fiend. Well, they have a really nice team fight on next KZ here, and and they, as you said, it's easy to keep Shadow Fiend down, but they have a Weaver too, so I don't know who I should favor here, <laughs> to be honest. It's good picks on both sides. We'll see. Reserve time already for Menace. They, of course, even if they already know which heroes they want to pick up, they can always take this time to think about what next KZ is going to do with their lanes or, how, uh, lanes, or how Menace is going to run their lanes, maybe already discussing some early game ganks. Of course, the one thing that you can do against a Shadow Fiend and why he's not picked up that often is because you can gank him early on in the game. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if uh, Menace has a plan for that in mind. Ten seconds remaining. Um, apparently you are slightly audible inside the game client. Um, people in the game, if you are not hearing him at all, you have to switch to a different broadcaster channel and then back again, and you should be able to hear him. People that hear him and uh, hear him soft, I think that's uh, that's your volume that you turned down for me, so I could yeah. turn you up. Maybe I you turned it up a little bit now too. Okay, then I will turn you down a little bit more. I'll do that. Well, they picked up Sanking. That's a good pickup. They need one of those direct stuns so they can follow up with Puck and Gyro or whatever to kill that Weaver. Yeah, Sanking indeed. Sanking Visage is actually support that we've seen a lot in the Asian scene, or that I've seen in the Asian scene quite a bit lately. But you can of course slow someone down with a Visage and then Sanking get it, can get in range for the stun. Which yeah. is normally his biggest issue to just get in range for the stun as his level 1 range is very low. It's almost melee range for him. But uh, with the vision there, they can definitely go for some early game ganks. I think the Shadow Fiend is going to need some protection as well from uh, from next KZ, from next KZ's supports, and that is uh, quite needed. Let's see who's playing what. We of course have got Menace on the uh, dire side. They're formerly known as Rat in the Dark, so they should be some familiar names there. As Lapis will take on the Sand King. We've got Spin, normally playing the offlane. This play now playing the Gyrocopter. The stand in Jerex, by the way, interesting story. Jerex used to play for Red in the Dark before he got poached by Cupad and now he is standing in for them again. Mm. Uh, but he is going to be playing the Visage, we saw him playing that yesterday as well. It will be Sifla, will take on the carry Life Sealer, actually went and Quelling Blade and Stout Shield. Didn't get pulled at all though, but oh well. We'll play the Life Sealer in the mid lane, it will be uh, Boogie playing the Puck as expected, and he did get pulled. He got pulled a self and a Tango even, and is uh, waiting in that mid lane for his block. And I will leave uh, next KZ to be introduced by you. Nice. Well, we have uh, on Shadow Fiend, what the fucker? Uh, in the mid, I guess. Stolcat playing the Dorks here, he's gonna go top. Um, Reeves playing the Rubik. Equal playing the Naga Siren, and the on Weaver we have... Begins. I don't even know if I can read that. Mant. It is. Uh, it is Manta. That's what it says. But it's, Manta. Ma it's Manta. Mantis, which is his actually name. Mantis, who uh, likes to be called. Manta I don't. Player. I don't think they will send anyone bottom. Uh, Menace. They will just go in the forest with Life Stealer and leave that lane. Mm, we already have a Sentry Ward being removed here. Ooh, unless well, Equal goes down. No, it will be indeed Menace that gets a better hand of this. But they don't have a Sentry Ward that actually blocks out the Observer, which is of course quite nice. As uh, so we have a telekinesis, Lapis gets dropped down as well. In comes the Riptide, they might be able to take him down. He still has a Burrow Strike though, and will try to use it to get to the <laughs> high ground, but is now stuck without gold. And there comes the ward on the high ground, and that means that any ranged hero should be able to pick him up, which in this case is Reeves, who actually takes quite a lot of damage still. But that's First Blood taken by the Naga Siren with the Riptide and First Blood on the board in favor of Next KZ, and another sentry to finally counter that Observer Ward that's still standing there. Yeah, that was lucky. Reeves had on haste through, and then he got the shield from Darks here. It's so much damage early on. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty strong. As we have a pause coming out from next KZ, of course, taking out an Observer Ward this early on in the game is so strong, especially since you know that your Shadow Fiend is gonna get ganked because he is a Shadow Fiend. So you can maybe uh, try to prevent that a little bit with the Sentry Ward having this or standing there and the Observer Ward in the high ground as well. Yeah. However, they do was were forced to use the observer ward also on the high ground on the rune, like on the other side of the rune. So and they got the first blood for it. I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's worth it. Yeah, four and a half minutes before they can buy uh, wards again. Though, well, I, I guess three and a half minutes right now, since we're already one minute into the game. Looks like we're also gonna have a top lane left alone by Next KZ as a Spin is by himself on the gyrocopter and 
Dark City will probably farm in the jungle. Yeah, it seems like that. They're giving up their, their easy lanes, both of the teams. Or their hard lanes, I mean. It's a little bit weird. It means that we have one PvP lane, it's the mid lane. And it's the one lane, of course, that can make the biggest difference. And it's also the one lane that I think supports is going to be hanging around uh, on the side of next QC, just to try and make sure that uh, what a fucker gets his uh, levels up a little bit, or at least get his souls up a little bit. Yeah. But here comes the lack of stuns, in my opinion. I mean, Sankey needs levels to be able to go to, to the mid and, and gank that Shadow Fiend, so he might have a quite good time in the beginning here, still, even though it's a Shadow Fiend. Yeah. For sure, and I mean, if Sand King now wants to try and gank with the uh, Visage with... I mean, Visage already has a smoke in his inventory, so that's going to be working out for him. But I think that they kind of need to come from the other side. Got to need to try and gank around yeah. and um, come from uh, from the bottom, from south, basically. To try and yeah, kill I off the Shadow Fiend. And we actually have Eco hanging around here, but he will probably try to go to the jungle. Of course, if there's only one PvP lane basically going on, it's going to be very... Uh, important to see the last hit progression, so we're, we can really compare the gyrocopter to the weaver, and we can compare the supports. Of course, who is pulling better in the jungle of the two? Uh, <laughs> of yeah, the a two little teams. bit of a slow start, a little boring, but yeah, definitely a slow start. <laughs> unfortunately for us, because I mean, in theory, Puck shouldn't die, and Shadow Fiend only will die if there is going to be uh, some ganks going on. So that will yeah. be easy to scout out. Should be easy to scout out. I don't think they will waste any time moving on Shadow Fiend until Puck is at least level 6 so they can take it. Yeah, so they have to Dream Coil. And they have to wait regardless until the ward is gone. They know it's there, the Sentry Ward that is. Yeah, that too. Well, we'll see. Oh, uh, support's actually very important to get that level 6 up. Because we've got ourselves, of course, uh, the Epicenter, which is maybe the least important one in this one. But the Familiars, the Song of the Siren, and the Spell Seal from Rubik. All very important level 6s yeah. to get up, so... I think all supports are going to be fairly stuck inside the jungle until they are level 6 probably as well. I mean, unfortunately it is the way it is, but yeah, very slow start for, for I guess, for from a spectator point of view. Definitely. I guess no one of them really dared to... Oh, oh wait a second, what? maybe not that slow. Maybe not that slow. Hello, Equal. Selkut coming out with an iron shell on Equal, and that was a nice skill. Invisibility rune by the Naga Siren used, of course, and... We had Wadafaka able to get rid of the um, phase shift beforehand. Oh, that's a big deal, actually. They have 2-0 oh, up now, and they, this Shadow Fiend is getting lasted, so he's hard to last it versus soon. Or already, actually. He has a lot of damage. Yeah, he already Plus, has 17 souls. Yeah. Almost setting off his max. Only two more lasts needed. In the meantime, actually, Mantis is not even trying to go for some lane equilibrium here. He's trying to force someone out towards the bottom lane. He is pushing down the tier 1 tower, which is already taking quite a bit of damage here. And he might actually try to take it down uh, fairly soon. But there's nobody of Menace who actually would rotate. I mean, their life stealer is not going to rotate bottom. Like, for example, Bedrider might. No. And this is the, the upside with having Weaver, because it's he's so hard to kill, so he can be a dead, this cocky. Meanwhile, Gyrocopter has to be more careful, because he's, he's easier to gank. Yeah, he's also a little bit behind on the on the Weaver, it looks like. Weaver is two levels, or no, two levels, two last hits ahead. And actually a creep wave ahead, so that's where the level difference comes from, I think. Uh, but two last hits ahead for, for Mantis. As a Gyrocopter is sitting on 22 for 7. He has to last it under his tower as well, though, so that's kind of hurting him at the moment. Yeah, it's much harder to do that. A and lot of pauses. More pauses. A lot of ping coming out from... Uh, from next KZ, apparently. Pings, ups and downs. Of course, in the meantime, still... Uh, actually, it looks like Twitch has stopped being annoying. Well, that's good news, isn't it? Awesome. It, it works? Well, the Twitch, at least. So, uh, at, at the moment, Twitch is having... Like, Twitch changed last Thursday or Wednesday or something to have high, medium and low settings and source settings. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And with that change... Uh, every time I try, like, if I run my stream normally, it's fine. If I run my stream on a delay server, so I have to have two minutes delay when casting Star Ladder, for example. Mm -hmm. And if I run it on delay, it actually sometimes doesn't accept all my frames that I'm sending. Oh. And right now I've already turned my bitrate really low while my upload is, like, at, like, very high. So, uh, Twitch's servers are just 
I don't know, something changed and it's not working as intended. And because of PAX, I think they don't really have time to look into my issue, or at least they haven't gotten back to me. I've tried writing to everybody that I had from Twitch, but unfortunately no answer just yet. And I've been asking everybody to send reports, but for now it's, it looks like it's stable again, so that's good. It's just a bit stupid. But these guys are not stable yet. They're no. lagging, it seems. Apparently so. Apparently so, we can actually see that. Ping. We actually... Oh, wow! Uh, Shadow Fiend is sitting on 1300 ping! Yeah, he did. Can you do it again? How do you, how, what do you write? I write uh, ping in the um, console. And we have what the fuck now at 2k ping! Woo! Wow. Uh, in the console, if you if you click your console button and then just write ping, you should be able to see. It's not entirely correct, because apparently it's pinging you to the Dota server and then the Dota server to uh, to the player. Okay. So you have like it's you have to take it with a pinch of salt. But uh, yeah. He's reconnected now. Let's hope it's better. Pauses are so annoying. Was over soon, and I guess epic for the win. Well, we're gonna see soon. The reconnect is there, anyways. Two kills going the way of NextKZ so far, indeed. And the supports level two for Visage still. We have got uh, the other support, Sand King, level three, so he's a level higher than that. Rubik sitting at level three, and Naga Siren sitting at level two, though, of course, he has got both of the kills. Oh, yeah, that's true. He has two kills already. Nice. Yeah, like that. There's a lot of support, a lot of gold for support, especially that first blood money. I like having uh, first blood on supports. It just gives you so much momentum in terms of getting your wards together, just getting all those early game items up for supports that normally take a while. I mean, Equal could already get boots, which is a luxury that uh, Sand King doesn't have, luxury that Visage can't think of yet either. And I mean, upgraded courier, all those things come just very easily to yeah. a support that has indeed got a little bit of farm there. I agree with you there. So, some teams always leave the kills for the carries, but early on, I think it's better to get it on the supports. Yeah, especially if we have someone that needs to bottle crow, which of course in this case is not really true. What a fucker is kind of fine uh, this way, but he is bottle crow in the end. He has got the upgraded courier. Of course, upgraded courier is there too for for menace. Don't get me wrong. Do they have the same courier? They do. How often do you see this courier, and how often do you then see this? What is he saying? Borsch. I don't know what that means. Nice handwriting though. Uh, it's a it's a nice courier. It's a snail. It's a snail. Like, you don't see it that often. I never watch the courier. I never do. I, I never know what it is afterwards. But now I know it's a snail, so that's good. Uh, one of the couriers implemented with the patch is actually invisible. <laughs> or was um, invisible. Like I a bug? Like, invisible for, for the Invisible players? for everybody, for the players. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, if you were the one th uh, on which team you are, you of course see the bar. I mean, you see the bar regardless, I guess, so that helps. But you can't really see anything. I think it was... I, I'm not sure. You got it with a ticket that you bought somewhere. I haven't seen that, at least. Me neither. Well, I saw it on a screenshot on Reddit. That's it. Reddit always bringing the good stuff, of course. <laughs> I'm worried about this Shadow Fiend. It's gone again. Yeah. It's kind of troublesome to have this much lag. Especially if you're a Shadow Fiend. I mean, right now he has 19 souls, so I guess it comes... I mean, it, it's good that it didn't come earlier, because he has got a little bit extra damage right now to his last hit, so he should be able to not miss even with ping, but if you're up against the puck, that ping is actually quite important. Yeah, it's very hard anyway, but, but with this start, I think he's going to be fine, as you said. He has plus 41 damage already. Mm -hmm. No boot yet, though. Just went for the race band, and he still has a salve. He is, uh, he is still the same level as well, this only, there's a very slight level difference only. Boogie having seven denies, five denies for uh, what a fuck. What a fuck. Only twelve last hits actually. Seven and uh, twelve also for Boogie. But considering Puck just died, that's quite uh, nice for Boogie actually on the Puck. Yeah, but in the beginning, your Shadow Fiend has issues. Yeah. When his damage increases, his last hits do as well. I guess. Here comes a reconnect. Oh, that's actually a uh, Chinese caster. I do like it though. This like last season. Chinese wasn't. I don't think Starlord was casted in Chinese, but this season, 
every Chinese caster wants to cast Star Ladder because they're so interested in their European Dota, I think. Want to be bringing some extra content to the people. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. So you were part of the production for the Swedish uh, television on yeah, uh, TI3, right? How yes. was that? That was um, a weird day pattern, but really fun. Yeah, I guess weird you hours, can sum it up like that. Yeah, really weird hours. And, and I'm not used to it anymore. When I was a gamer, I was up late, but now I was really tired. Drank a lot of energy drinks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was really fun. Very, very fun. How many viewers did you end up getting? I actually didn't follow that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it was so many because it was a firm on TV and yeah, the uh, hours, I guess also. Yeah, and the hours too. But it was a good start, I think. And uh, of course, since the team from from the same countries as the show won, was a kind of cool too. And I guess you had um, uh, you, you had Hellspawn on location. Yeah. Were you able to get interviews with players and such, or or how did you do that? Yeah, it was it was live a after the the win, of course, and uh, before that we had some. Uh, uh, some interviews which were pre-made, uh, but that was really good, really good actually. Cool. Kind of jealous that it wasn't in the in the Netherlands, but unfortunately, next year maybe. Yeah, next year they, I think there should be like an English show. I guess that's that's I mean that's already there. Just the entire international should be on television regardless on the with the normal English broadcast. Cause yeah, yeah I, esports is really small in the Netherlands, which is kind of a shame. Is it? Yeah. I mean, or at least Dota is small in the Netherlands. I know that there is a Dutch StarCraft League and everything like that. And we do have uh, some Dutch people that everybody knows. I mean, I think uh, there is uh, Grubby, of course, as well as uh, Liquid Red that everybody knows about that's Dutch, or are Dutch, both of them. And I guess I can, for Dota, I mean, we have Sing Sing. Oh, and he's, from, he's from Holland. Yeah, and Sexy Bamboo as well. Know. So that oh, helps. So finally the game going. Yeah, when you switch PC, apparently that can be happening very fast. Maybe they're in an internet cafe or something. Probably, yeah. I hope so. Now we have some stacks going on in the jungle. A nice bunch of farm that uh, Iku can pick up, or probably Stalkat actually. It's probably best. Stalkat, who doesn't really have anything just yet. I mean, he's got the assist on the kills. Oh, wait a second, gank happening, smoke happening. What the fuck are you better running? In comes a burrow strike, in comes an orb. The slow is there as well. They should be able to nuke him down, and they do. Jarex with the soul assumption. Nice kill. Yeah, that, was, that was bad of him. Dying like that when he had this good start. But I guess smoke and the right timing. That made them get a kill. Yeah, they waited until the sentry was gone, of course, which has only just happened. And um, got himself back. I I have a voice in Dota 2 client. For people that still can't hear my co-caster, you just have to switch to a different broadcaster and then come back. Because uh, apparently there's something that's something that's wrong Dyer's with, uh, with Dota attack. TV as we have a rotation from Jarex going bottom to try and maybe slow down Mantis. But Mantis has got time lapse right now. So he is quite comfortable here in this bottom lane. Yeah, I think he's only there for the levels with Visage. He can't do anything about Don't Weaver. Me. He has to make sure to not feed him, that's the only thing he can Radiance do there. Yeah, it might be trouble because Equal comes in from behind. He has gotten a snare, Radiance but Jerex backs off. He doesn't have ward though, so this is just Spider Senses paying off, or he's just gonna go for a block. Well, the moment that he shows himself next to the tower, yeah, there's gonna be play. three people there. I mean, Reeves is there as well. They see and him if they go really deep here with, with time lapse. Yep. Let's see how far they get. Fate Bolt will force him back. Jarek's still not aware that there is a Naga Siren around the corner. But he has the feeling, I guess. He looks really Dyer's scared. Bottom tower yep. is under attack. There's two support. Is there one support? There's another. They know where he is. Fortified. They're gonna try and find him. Equal already safe there. And he knows that he can find... Yeah, that's gonna be. <laughs> oh, man fight. Tower went down. Now Weaver can, out, can help out. Comes in. In comes a Riptide as well. And that's gonna be Soul Sumption, but it doesn't matter. Nice dream call up on three though. Hello, Puck. Or misses everybody. Nice dodge. Brilliant dodge. And actually, he's afraid to go in. Yeah. Wow, brilliant dodge. I did. They, they didn't see that, did they? Maybe they did. Telekinesis and snare boogie. You're no dead if you don't face ship right now. He doesn't. He dies. Another kill going the way of Next KZ. Four to one right now. That is some big kills going the way of Next KZ. That was very bad movement of Puck. He shouldn't have come. That Visa was, was dead anyway. And now he used his ult and he died. That's really big. 
that is a guaranteed kill. And that means that Puck once again dies, and that also means that what the fuck has hasn't been some free farm here in this mid lane. He's got a regen rune as well. Uh, by the way, there is a rotation. Stalker did went top in the end. Uh, to go top in the end, and uh... Well, he's just trying to make sure that Gyrocopter's not free farming as much, and he has still is forced to last it under his tower, which is not really ideal. He is high or high on net worth. He's not highest because that is, of course, the Weaver who is last sitting better. Is he though? He actually no, isn't. He got the tower though. Yeah, that helps for sure. Are you expecting him to go for Lincoln's in this game as well, like standard build or something else? I'm 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 thinking about this sanking. If you if you stun, does the Lincoln stop it or not? I'm actually not sure. Which if it one? does, he should, he should get us Lincoln's, uh, the, the Sanking song. Yeah, it's, it does. Oh, wow. Dreamgrove comes in equal, doesn't have a song or anything like that, but we do have Motherfucker probably save. Nice and snare. The Burrow Strike might still be there. Puck jumps to towards his orb. Soul Subject comes in, doesn't get the kill though. Four heroes here for Menace with an infested visage. Yeah, that's not good. Mm, three heroes coming in now for next KZ on the sideline. Stalkat thinking about going in, waits first until the piss is on the high ground. Ooh, we see he's in Burrow Strike. Stalkat, he does have a surge. Gets silenced first though, and that is gonna be one dead Darkseer. Nicely picked up by men as an overextension by Stalkat. Definitely. That was nice. Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah, but you see now when Puck comes in, he uses ulti, and four people run in and they can't get that <laughs> yeah. set of in anyway, so if he has a good positioning early like this, they're not gonna get him. And he's gonna farm, and the same goes with Weaver. So What do you think that mana should do to make that turn around? Well, they have to hope that they can get better farm on Gyra and, and uh, Lifestealer, I guess. But Lifestealer is not farming so good. Gyra is okay, I guess. The question remains then, when does Gyra rotate and try to help out his team? When does he feel like it's Time. What what item does he need? Is he gonna be just going for drums after this and go for it then? Uh, it's really hard to say actually, because a BKB can be very risky when you're playing versus Siren as well. So maybe he should just get a drum, start fighting with them, and hope that uh, they can keep down the Shadow Fiend. The Weaver, I think they have to almost give up and hope that they can beat even team fights. So. Yeah. This is really hard to gank. Yeah, it's really hard to gank. They really need to be able to shut him down. And as you already pointed out, there's just not that many shutdowns. As we are seeing the shutdown on the top lane, Spin is in a lot of trouble right now. Lands the cooldown, tries to fly away. And should be actually able to do that. Stalkat cannot chase anymore. And in comes Boogie, actually. Gonna actually pour towards his orb. Dream Goyle, Stalkat. Tries to surge away, gets, of course, hit by that one. Gets slowed down, but it doesn't matter. Surge still on. Reeves is gonna be the one to try and weave his way through the creep wave. I'm not sure what he was doing, but he dies for it. Almost gets a kill up on spin though. Actually, oh, that iron shell. <laughs> that was too close. Yeah, he has a TP back home. But I don't like this that this uh, puck is TPing in on all the fights instead of initiating them. Now he lost the power mid. Gave Shadowfin even more free farm. And he's far further away from his uh, Blink Dagger still as well. I mean, he doesn't really take time to farm anymore, so. Yeah. Blink Dagger. Look at the money that Shadowfin has now. That's not good. That's a rich guy. He does only have brown boots though. Uh, yeah, maybe he's going for a shadow blade. I don't know. It could be. We still have Weaver higher on that worth as Sankin goes down in the top lane. Rubik able to uh, take him down. He has actually stolen the Burrow Strike level 3, one of the best spells to steal. Always uh, always nice to have. It is Darkseer that is going for the mechanism this game. Almost has uh, the headrest complete and then needs the recipe. And Boogie is probably gonna stuck, be stuck in his lane until he has his Blink Dagger. I think that's the, probably the best choice. Yeah, or if he can I initiate the ganks instead of counter TPing, because they're running away from him. They have Weaver, they have Darkseer, they're f fast heroes. Maybe they can pick up Rubik like they did now, but that's not worth it. It's just a support. Yeah, five to three so far on the kill score, and so far, of course, they killed off the Shadow Fiend, which was awesome. But apart from that, they haven't really killed any core heroes just yet. Darkseer, in this case, not really one of the cores for sure. Well, on their side. Their puck has died twice, mm -hmm. and that's a big kill to get every single time that next because he gets it. Yeah, and and with Shadow Fiend, this is a normal mistake. You kill him early, but really, oh. it's now when you have to kill him all the time. Reeves tries to fly, at least forces out some TPs and a cooldown. That's nice. It comes another search. He should be keeping him safe. They were trying to catch out, spin all the time, but weren't able to do it. And then the TPs come in. In the meantime, talking about. 
a spin, which is actually Dutch for spider, so that's why I'm actually making that bridge there, but I guess it has nothing to do with that in English. But uh, Mantis is still doing quite nice on this bottom lane. I mean, he is he is forcing Sifla out of this lane almost completely. He was building towards an omelet. I, I guess Sifla's having better form here than he had in the jungle, though. I can't really tell. I think it's quite kind of equal. And I mean, Weaver is taking up all his time. Meanwhile, he's free farming. That's a nice lane for him. It's really nice. Well, yeah, I guess Sifla was just there for the experience in the end. We have got a smoke coming off from uh, Jarex and Lapis, but there's no Shadow in mid because he actually is on the bottom lane. He picked up a uh, regen rune. He is in his Shadow Blade that he is indeed picked up. And Boogie is looking for him with that haste rune. And in the end, TP's out. Well, that's that. As Gyrocopter dies on the top lane. Nice skill being done by the Dark Seer. Cooldown being used for that as well. Boogie has TP towards the top lane purely to try and counter initiate, but yeah. once again, not able to do it. Actually, goes down for it. Double kill going the way of the Dark Seer. Iron Shell's MVP. It's not over just yet. The supports came in, and then Snare is there. And Sand King will get a raise. No, that one was missed. That was a little bit awkward. I kind of thought they were going to get that kill. Stalkart might make a difference. He still has that vacuum. He's only level 2, though. Who actually has enough gold for a Manta Star or for Mechanism? Stalker, okay, that is, but no. Nope. Yeah, looking really strong now, Ooh. Max Casey. Or still, yes, Shadow Blade activated by Shadow Fiend. Looking for pickups, looking for support. Still for the Sand King, then? Yeah. There is gonna be a slow, though. What a fuck, there's gonna be slow, unless he gets surged. Really? That's a big dive for that. Well, Weaver will be there. Oh. That's a kill. That's just a long chase to get a Sand King alone. Yeah, but they kept them busy too, so he can hit the bottom Dyer's tower for a lot of HP, actually. So that Dyer's was good. But Boogie did it again, he tipped it to a fight which was already over, used some spells and died. That's really not good for him, and he is still not within range for his blink. And he only has brown boots as well. Okay, for people wondering, by the way, I have just checked with an admin if... The next game will actually start before this one is over. I'm assuming it's not, but I just checked to be sure. I'm waiting for an answer right now as Boogie is forced away from the mid lane. Look at that damage coming out from Wadafaka. That's pretty scary. Mm. Yeah, this, this looks... I, I don't want to say it, but it looks really bad for Menace right now. Um, I don't know how they should come back from this. Farming up their life sealer, I guess. Step num number one. Farming up the gyrocopter, step number two. Gyrocopter is building towards BKB. Maybe with that they can fight a little bit better. But they need to stop getting caught out of position and need to stop having their puck TP all over the place. I mean, he just needs to farm up his, his blink dagger. He's so close. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if Sanking is not there, they should, should just realize they can't get any kills because they need that stun to really <laughs> stop them. Oh, oh, dream coil. In comes Motherfucker as well, though, and that's gonna be bad news for the puck, who indeed drops. Next one to go down. Visage, perhaps. There he goes, indeed. Cherofin with a double kill. He might be dying for it, though he does, but at least he takes one with him. That's gonna be a Sand King dead. A triple kill for Cherofin that was able to take the last kill with, of course, his Requiem of Souls that came out after he, or once he died. It's three for one, still pretty good <laughs> trade. <laughs> really good. But it was not necessary for him to die there, he could have just took the two kills and went out. But he got a little bit of confidence again. Dyer's bottom tower Nike's got a lot of levels from the kill. Dyer's top yep. tower I mean, they killed off one of the higher levels in the game, level 11 Dyer's on the Shadow Fiend. And they were themselves, or at least Lifestealer was, well, is now level 11, but yeah. was level 9 and a little bit, I believe. 9 and uh, almost level 10 before that, so he got a full level from that. But they still took the top tower. They, they, they look really strong. I have to say that in this game, at least. Yeah. Might be the first game that they end up uh, winning. We have Shadowfeet now picking up Boots of Travel, which is an interesting choice. It feels kind of cocky to me. Very cocky to me. I don't know why he did that. There's no reason. But okay. I think what it's going to come down to, if if Mendes going to come back, is this sinking, getting a blink or getting some levels, because. He can do st stuff with the enemies. He's pretty much the only one who can. Yeah, oh, Boogie. Telekinesis is there. He still has an orb and a phase shift, though, but will he be able to get both out? Nope. Yes. Yes. Vacuum back. Nice. In comes a stun from the familiars. They're trying to turn it around. Burrow strike. They will not get it, though. In comes the strong mechanism. Stalkat. Still attack. Sifla with the rage. TP out there. Puxy ones up going down because Shadowfiend came in from the other side with his Requiem of Souls. 
<laughs> That's still gonna be a kill going the way of Menace. Uh, sorry, going the way of Next KZ, rather, as uh, Stalgard will live. In the meantime, Mantis has never left his lane, has he? He was mid for a second, I don't know what he did there, but now he's back there doing the same thing again. But here you can see, even though they got the stun off, they have the sleep, they can just counter initiate, and I think I think Next KZ has a superior lineup, especially with the start that they got. It's really hard to fight. Is it lineup or like is it do you feel like it's slightly outpicked or outplayed? No no no, I, I said with the start they had okay. right now it's really hard to get back. I, I can't say that they are outpicked. Oh the Cor, you're dead. You're oh. dead. Shadow Fiend able to grab him with the Shadow Blade. And that was actually it was an empty uh, empty courier, so that's good at least. Like silver lining good. But it's still quite bad. Spin needing 1300 gold before he ha actually has got his BKB ready and that, that's that's a fairly late BKB for free farming solo top gyrocopter or, yeah. or, or safe tri lane gyrocopter I should say. Yeah I agree it's, it's late actually. And he actually only died once. Still his net worth is highest on that of his team though. But below all three cores of next KZ including I mean including Stalkite in one of the cores actually right now. That's it's rough. But let's hope for this sand king. I believe in this sand king. Sand king with brown boots and a sentry ward. Smoked <laughs> up with an infested life serial inside of him. Looking for Reeves perhaps. If he can get that pro strike off that would be something. And comes an orb from Reeves so he's able to jump himself towards that stolen orb. Stalcat. Oh Dark Sea still goes down but Stalcat. He walked right into that. Will end up going down but might have set up. A couple of kills for his teammate. Gyrocopter already dead. Rubik now goes down as well. It looks like Menace might actually be winning this fight. Unless there's gonna be some more victims right here. Jarex will end up going down. Killing spree for what a fucker. It's two for two. With actually a favorable trade for next KZ in the end because the Gyrocopter that went down. I have to point out though, the Sand... Oh. oh. I was gonna say the Sand King that you were rooting for still lived and all that, but then no. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> oh. Oh, that was kind of sad. This looks yeah. bad. This looks bad. I don't know what they can do now. They should try to group up, but this Weaver, I don't even know how they can catch this Weaver. Did he even take damage in that fight? Nope. He actually, Mentis nope. hasn't got any kills for himself. He is a very selfless person, only got assists. Six assists is what he has. Yeah. He has a Mithril Hammer now, so it's close to his Deso. And that's gonna be huge if he gets a Deso soon. Yeah, that's gonna be hurtful on that uh, life sealer right there. Life sealer who finally has his armlet might be looking towards Basher soon. And Shadow Fiend once again on the t on the hunt. This time though, there's a sentry ward on the high ground, so he has to be careful. But he'll uh, he'll be fine by the looks of it. Five heroes with next from next KZ from the high ground. Tier tower is not gonna last long. I'm not. I don't think the mana should try to fight here. Unless they can get a, like even if they get a brilliant initiation going. Whoa, wait a second. Oh, That's go. gonna be Stalka trying Could to run for it. Nice dream coil. Nice. Darkseer already down. In comes a song though, helping out, and that is gonna sh or should allow Next KZ to back off. Link is pop. Mantis actually doesn't back off. He still got dusted though, but the burst strike misses and gets stolen by Reeves. And down goes the Sand King. Poor, poor Sand King. It's so simple. He has no armor either. With the bugs on him. That was a good initiation, but what happens oh, now? Oh, Reeves. Burrow strikes himself to safety. In comes to maybe a kill. Lifestealer trying to run for it. One more hit needed from Motherfucker. Gets a soul assumption. That's still a kill. Weaver actually with the last hit. Spin. Trying to do what he can, but he's already on the run. Maybe Rocket Barrage. His mount is gonna overextend here. Still has a time lapse. Looks like he's gonna be just fine. Might be getting a triple kill here. Does get a triple kill. Of course he does. That's a team wipe. Oi. Oi. That was depressing. I really thought it, like you said, I mean, it, it started out okay. They had a four-man dream coil. They had the Darkseer picked off. Yeah, that was good. But then my Sand King missed his stun. And they just turned around on him and killed him. So easy. Yep. Well, that's going to be the ancient stack. Menace is going to be... Well, it's gonna be fighting from quite a way behind. I haven't looked at the gold graph all game, but I think it should come to nobody's surprise that it's next KZ that's ahead. Woohoo. 17k gold in their favor, 16k experience in their favor, and, and right now, I mean, the thing with the Shadow Queen is if he gets ahead, 
It's so tough to stop him. And it's not just Shadow Fiend, it's Weaver as well. And even Stalkat, so farmed. Um, actually, Stalkat is a lot less farmed than the Shadow Fiend and the Weaver. There's actually, I mean, the Weaver and the, sorry, Stalkat is half the amount of farm of the other two cores. Basically that. Oh, yeah. I have to check out something very crucial. Yes. So, total gold earned on the side of Menace is 24k. Now, if we add up what Nixus or what uh, Weaver and Shadowfiend have together, it comes down to 24k. <laughs> That's kind of sad. That is very sad. I usually am not a big fan of calling the games over because I don't think it's ever over, but this looks li really grim. All I can say. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I mean, as, as apparently Menace does not think it's over because they're still fighting. Yeah, and, and Shadowfield is not getting a VKB, so th that's a good thing. Uh, Weaver doesn't have a VKB, so that's a good thing. But but really, I'm I can't really say this. Well, this is gonna be a do it or die fight. There's an infested puck. He finally has his blink dagger. One familiar or do you? Maybe not. Oh, Reeves, telekinesis, Jerex might be in the wrong position. In comes the Burl Strike though, but Burl Strike returned. And it is Visage that dies, Sand King that dies as well. We've already with the double kill. In comes Sifla. And Rubik that drops, but in comes the song. Sifla, the only one that is left standing. And down goes the gyrocopter the moment that the song ended. It is gonna be Boogie that gets picked up. Oh, well, Ultra Kill. GG was called. They tried it one last time. They failed. Sifla will be able to live through this by the looks of it. Is just trying to find his way back to bases. We're gonna have the throne exploding soon. And we're gonna then jump ourselves into the next game, which will be Dusa versus KP. As next KZ ends up with a 1 to 1 score, 1 loss, 1 win, and Menace, of course, they go to 1 2, loss 2, 1 1. And we're gonna see if KP can get rid of that 0 in front of their 1 because they have 0 1 so far, so 1 win, or 1 0 wins, 1 loss. Dusa, of course, still 0 0. So it's the first time that we're gonna see them after they won the qualifiers on Thursday. Well, I think we've said everything there is to say about this game. And of course, we are slightly behind schedule, so we're going to jump ourselves right into the next game. So stick around for more Starlighter action. It is KP and Dusa coming up next. <laughs>